This video series is designed to supplement the introduction to scene painting lessons in beginning stagecraft. Throughout these videos, I will discuss and demonstrate some common applications for the more frequently used scene painting techniques. If you have no previous experience in scene painting and scenic art, you should spend some time practicing these techniques on scrap lumber before you attempt something more complex, such as brick or marble. You should focus on how paint blends with each of them and with different consistencies of paint and water in your mixtures. Practice the techniques and learn how to use the tools associated with them. To begin, there are a variety of ways that scene painting can be applied. Paint can be applied as a wet blend, which combines two or more colors while wet to create paint effects. As a dry brush, which layers paint on top of previous layers, but with only partial coverage. Application can be translucent, revealing the previous layer, or application can be opaque, covering up previous layers. Applications can provide partial coverage, such as a spattering technique, which has broad coverage but also has lots of space between the specks and the dots. As full coverage, such as with a glaze to change a color tone of a paint job. Or as a combination of the two, such as multiple glazes on brick to increase irregularity. Paint effects may also be accomplished by controlled removal such as mopping paint away with rags or tissue paper, or by using sanders, scrapers, and other abrasive tools. So the first thing we have to think about when we start mixing up our scene paint and getting ready to paint is we have to think about the paint consistency. The paint consistency is going to come out of the can thicker than we want it to be. And it's uh, thicker for a couple of reasons. It's thicker to use in a house painting project, painting the walls of your house, painting the outside of your house. It goes on in a smooth single coat and it dries quickly and it covers well. And in theater, we want to have more open time where we have time to work with it, have time to get colors to blend together and mix and do different things. So in order to do that, we usually have to have it a little bit more watery than what comes out of the can. The uh, different consistencies I kind of liken to various milk products or various dairy products. It comes out of the can and somewhere between uh, a sour cream and a Mexican crema, it, uh, it's about that consistency. This is straight up out of the can. It's a little bit thick. When it's thick like this, it's going to not have a lot of open time. It's going to dry real quick. We're not going to be able to do our scene painting. So this is, yeah, this is more like a, a nice Mexican crema. We usually try to go for 2% milk. Uh, if you can imagine that, that's where we want to go. And the ratio of paint to water is usually about two to one. So if you have two parts of paint, you use one part of water and that gets you normally to about a 2% milk consistency. I'm mixing up the paint really well. This is just like baking. You've got to get it mixed up really well. You've got to get everything scraped up off of the bottom of the bowl. You've got to get all those components integrated or it will not bake properly. Same thing here. If you separate the pigment from the binder and from all the other elements, it's just not going to do what you want it to do and stir it regularly. Paint has four primary components. Pigment, vehicle, binder, and filler. Pigment provides the color or hue of the paint. Value is the quality of tint or shade. Tint refers to adding white to a color. Tone refers to adding gray to a color. Shade refers to adding black to a color. Saturation or chroma refers to the brilliance or intensity of a color. 
Vehicle refers to the liquid or solvent that the other elements are suspended within. All common seed and paint and household paint is water-based with water cleanup, so the vehicle is water. Many other vehicles include lacquer, alcohol, paint thinner, ketones, esters, xylenes, or alkyd oils such as tongue oil or linseed oil. Binder refers to the glue or glue-like components that bind or glue all the elements together after the vehicle evaporates. Water-based paints are often called latex-based and will contain acrylic or vinyl resin as the binders. They do not actually contain latex, but can produce a latex or rubber-like finished coating. Acrylic is a hard plastic and typically is considered to create a higher quality latex-based paint. Vinyl is more flexible than acrylic and less expensive. Most paints will have a mixture of acrylic and vinyl resin. Casein uses milk as a binder base. These are often called milk paints. Epoxy paints use a two or three part chemical reaction to bind the elements together. Other common binders include polyurethane, polyester, alkyd enamels, silicates, and many others. Fillers or additives affect the application and properties of the paints. The most common ones affect opacity, such as the addition of titanium white which serves to tint the pigment at the same time as increasing opacity. Thickening agents provide additional viscosity to aid in smoother application. Surfactants or soaps are added for paint stability. They can help keep pigments equally dispersed. Defoamers control bubbles when paint is agitated or during the manufacturing process. Some additives can provide increased fire resistance. Biocides are added to keep bacteria from growing and discourage mildew growth. Additives are available for improving color strength, brightness, haze, gloss, without affecting the viscosity. They can also make paints self-leveling or add slip resistance to the finished product. I'm going to pour some into the bucket. I've got about, you can see in the shadow there, I've got about, what, uh, almost an inch of paint in there. Before I go on, I need to dress my bucket. I can't just leave it like that. It's gonna dry up. I get a small paintbrush. I clean this out immediately before doing anything else. Clean out my, clean the paint off of my stir stick. And I have a bucket of water here that's separate from my mixing water. This is my throw my paint tools in the water and keep them from drying up bucket. And then I'm going to seal this up. I may come back to it, so I'm not going to tap it fully closed, but we'll start with that. So if I have about an inch of paint here, I'm going to need to have about a half an inch of water. And this is just a rough start. When you do different paint techniques, you're going to need different processes. And I actually still need this paint stick because I'm still working with this color. Again, I need to mix it up really well. This is actually a good consistency. You're going to start with this and then different techniques are going to require different uh, consistencies. And there are paint techniques that can use the thicker paint as well. But a good general starting point is this. If it gets too watery, it's going to go translucent. And that starts to move into a, the land of a glaze. And we'll talk about those later, but this is our good standard paint consistency. Someone has labeled this mold yellow. Mold yellow. I don't know what show it's from. I don't know if that meant the application but we're gonna use it. Nice and separated here. All that stuff on top is the, is the parts of the paint that need to be mixed in. 
will not work until we get the pigment mixed in with all of the binders and the vehicles and the various components. And this one's been sitting a while, so it's not mixing up very quickly, but we take as much time as it takes to mix thoroughly and get everything mixed in. If you want your paints to work properly, they need to be 100% fully mixed. I probably said in another video, I don't like to use the cordless drill attachments. They work fast, they work well, but I don't like the cleanup time involved in them. So I like to do things by hand. I like to shorten my cleanup time. And you can't really, with those tools, get into the corners of the bucket very well. If you're using some fresh paint and you just need a quick mix, that's okay. If it's been sitting on the shelf, you're really gonna need to get uh, in with, their, with your hand and get the separated elements dug up off the bottom. And as we can see, this bucket was not cleaned out very well by the previous users. Some of this can clean out as we go. I don't want to get this gunk into the paint. that bucket. Just don't scrape with a screwdriver towards your hand. You notice I'm pulling away from my hand at all times. I don't want to jam this into my palm. That's going to hurt. And Now this is going to seal better. We probably need to clean off the lid as well a little bit. But it's going to seal better. Now. All right, we're gonna do the same amount of paint, probably do about an inch of paint. You can get more precise measuring devices. I'm cleaning all this up out of the rim of the bucket paint can so it can seal nice and tightly and store and last longer. Now there, uh, looks like it's about an inch or a little more than an inch. All right. Made a mess on the table, cleaning up my messes right away. I don't want that big glob of paint drying on the table. And then I won't have a smooth table for other activities. A lot of theater is using household paint and a variety of different kinds from Home Depot or your local paint store. You can use those, but the professional scenic artists are gonna prefer Man Brothers or Roscoe or one of the other scene painting manufacturers because of the density and the quality of the color and you're not going to lose some of that intensity when you start watering them down. So they have a lot more advantages but they are a little more expensive. I found that using the Benjamin Moore Ben line, I'm pretty happy with that as a compromise without breaking my bank buying all the scenery paints. I still need some stock items like burnt umber and raw umber and a few other things, but I find that the Benjamin Moore Ben line mixes really well and I'm really happy with it in my scene painting. I can have them mix up the colors very specifically to whatever I want. If you want to go into scene painting professionally, you probably need to invest in the tools and the paints involved with that or your project will budget appropriately so you can use the higher quality paints.
But for your 99-seat theater, for your small community theater, it's okay that you don't spend the money on the expensive scene paint. And especially in your beginning stagecraft classes, it's okay to experiment with household paint. Common paint tools include brushes of various sizes. There are too many sizes and shapes and styles of brushes to enumerate them here, but you will encounter a variety of widths and sizes and thicknesses, liners and fitches and other styles, and experiment with them as time and space allows. Paint rollers also come in various sizes. The smaller six inch and four inch rollers provide greater control in many small scenic applications and also reduce cleanup time. Various specialty texture rollers are also available. Sprayers such as spray bottles, Hudson sprayers, garden sprayers, pneumatic sprayers, and HVLP sprayers. Feather dusters, whisk brooms, sponges. Natural sea sponges are most common for scene painting but household sponges can also be used to make stamps and other patterns. Paint stamping tools and rollers. Wood graining tools. Feathers. Rags. Wood blocks. Mops. With imagination and creativity, most anything can become a paint tool. Identify which is the good side and which is the bad side of your Luan. Hopefully, for actual scenic work, the carpenters will have assembled the flats with the good side out. If you try to paint the bad side, not only does it start out not smooth, it will frequently begin to delaminate, especially with scene paint mixed with additional water. The good side will be smoother than the bad side and will have fewer imperfections. Luan is sometimes called door skin because it is the outside layer of a hollow core doors. The outside is meant to be stained or painted. The bad side will have missing layers of lumber, patches where areas were filled or glued. The wood grain will be inconsistent where pieces mate. The good side is usually one continuous peeled layer of the tree trunk, but the bad side often is not. The bad side is also less smooth, but measuring by smoothness alone can sometimes be difficult. We're not gonna discuss in our introductory scene painting about color mixing. I'm going to assume that you will discuss that in your class or that you will learn it in your more advanced scene painting but in the basic level you don't need to concentrate so much on the methodology of the color mixing it's more important to focus on learning the techniques and how the tools work and observing how different colors interact and different consistencies interact with each other once you get familiar with the tools and the techniques then you should definitely explore color mixing because you're going to have to mix up your own colors. You're going to have to make things out of junk paint, scrap paint. You're going to have to take your primaries and find mix specific colors. You won't always be able to go get a specific color from the paint store, especially if you're using high quality scenic paints. There's the scenic paints come in a couple dozen colors and that's it because they assume that the scenic artist knows how to mix those colors to get all the other colors they want.